I asked the architects, why is the building so white? And they said, the people who come here bring the color. So when people come here from all walks of life, they will see something that they can identify with. And it's beautiful that way. The main feature of a traditional Qatari house is that it's built around a courtyard. And it will start with a room or two rooms, and it will expand according to the family's needs. Hello, welcome to Qatar 365 with me, Adil Halim. On this episode, we dig deep into some of Qatar's architectural wonders. We'll visit some of the country's heritage houses later in the show. But first, when you think of a mosque, you probably have an idea of what you're going to see. Well, I got a chance to check out a few iconic structures putting a contemporary spin on traditional places of worship. From the National Library to the National Museum, and the Museum of Islamic Art, there's no shortage of jaw-dropping designs across Qatar. And that idea of pushing architectural boundaries continues with the country's places of worship. The Education City Mosque is unlike any other. This is literally a beautiful sight in that it's a curved glass. So you can see there are um, laser cutouts of steel individually hanging on steel cables to be able to kind of fit this curved space. And this is chapter 49 in the Quran, Surah Al-Hujurat. The verses here, I mean, it's beautiful. 1400 years ago until now, the verses here still ring true. Talk about how a community should live together. So this is almost like the code of conduct. The 90-meter minarets, pointing straight to Mecca, can be seen from a distance, welcoming worshippers and visitors alike to a place of reflection. The reaction for a lot of people is that, you know, when you tell them that this is the mosque, it's like, wow, it's just too futuristic looking for it to be a mosque, you know? Um, and I think that's part of the appeal, is that um, it challenges people's notions of what an archetype of a mosque looks like, especially for this region. Suleiman Ba says the mosque is meant to be more than just a place of prayer. And he would know, in 2015, he came as a master's student. Soon after, he started working here and never left. And what is unique about this building, by the way, is that it's a mosque that also houses a university. And that goes back to it's the uh, mosque being the madrasa, the mosque being the place of learning. The function of the mihrab, even before microphones were invented, was for the acoustic. The space allows the recitation of the imam's voice to amplify, you know, to kind of project backwards. He says the mix of traditional Islamic architecture with modern architecture speaks volumes. The beautiful blend of modern parametric architecture. It doesn't have a specific shape. It's not a square, it's not a circle. It's rounded in one part, elevated in one part, lower in another part, almost like a sand dune. It's uh, the minarets are reimagined. They're not your lighthouse type of towers. They are, you know, tilting and giving you a bit of a cardinal direction. You're facing towards a compass point, you know, the, the direction that we face as Muslims to pray. So it, it gives you a little bit of everything, all right? And um, so, and that shows you the richness that exists within the Muslim world. Now there are more than 2,000 mosques across Qatar, but none quite like this one in Al Shahaniya. The distinctive leaning mosque and minaret was designed by Sheikh Faisal bin Qasim Al Thani, who wanted this mosque to stand out from any other in the world by blending modern design with rich Qatari tradition. والله أنا كنت أتوقع كان إن في انتقادات كثيرة ولكن بالعكس عينت أشياء الأشياء إيجابية أكثر وكذلك الزوار اللي يجي تشوفه ويجي وتهتم بهذا الشيء. Resembling the iconic leaning tower of Pisa, the leaning minaret is 27 meters in height with a 20 degree incline. The mosque is built by stones sourced from the immediate area and is decorated with stained glass windows. أنا أتمنى أن يكون معلم من المعالم اللي هي تمثل أول شيء تكون معلم قطري ومعلم في قطر ويمثل الإنسانية ويمثل الأديان ككل جميع في العالم. Construction took more than a year and was completed in time for the 2022 World Cup. Egyptian antique copper sits atop the mosque in the form of the dome and crescent. على ما أعتقد أن هذا سيبقى. للتاريخ لأنه صار إرث تاريخي فلذلك حاولت أن أحافظ عليه بالطريقة أن يكون إشي متحفي عديني يمثل الأديان ككله Ibrahim Jaida is a man with a vision. The internationally renowned Qatari architect has designed a wide range of buildings including contemporary mosques 
luxury hotels, mega shopping malls, and even a World Cup stadium. He was one of our very first guests on Qatar 365, and I recently caught up with him to find out more about his dream to restore Qatari architecture with a modern twist. Ibrahim, your work has helped shape the architectural landscape of Qatar from, you know, the interior of the National Mosque to Place Vendôme to the Al Shark Village and Spa. What goes through your mind when you think about how Qatar has transformed over the years? Well, Qatar really has gone through a major transformation. I would say from the boom of the late 90s until today, the transformation was really massive. The beauty with all this amount of construction Usually you will tend to lose identity or things would go in different direction. We've seen this happen in too many cities. However, fortunately, here in Qatar, all the direction, and we've seen this reflected in major signature buildings that has been done, that we maintain the identity, whether it's the Islamic Museum, Museum of Islamic Art, or our National Museum. And uh, the stadiums are a perfect example. Each stadium uh, reflects our culture in direct or indirect ways. Speaking of stadiums, you designed Al Tumama, which was the, the host of a, the FIFA World Cup and more recently the Asian Cup. Growing up, did you ever think you'd design a world-class football stadium? Never did, actually. Even when, we, uh, when Qatar was announced to host the event, I didn't think I would be doing a stadium. And uh, it was like a, a dream come true for me to not only to design such a massive project and it's a statement, but to be part of uh, representing my nation to the rest of the world was uh, an honor that you know, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. You said your dream is to create a Farij or a small neighborhood with a courtyard. Presumably this is to, to you know, re-establish a sense of community. Indeed, I think uh, after the oil boom, big master planners came from all over the world and designed our new neighborhoods. That did not put into consideration what was our neighborhood consisting of? It was the, the clusters were closer to each other, courtyard, there's a privacy, there's a sense of neighborhood, but we lost that. My dream is to revive the old neighborhood, uh, to take the qualities of the past, the privacy, the walkability, the environmental response to our environment, and put it back into a modern neighborhood. When you drive around the city and you see projects that were designed by other people as well, does that also give you inspiration? Certainly do. It's, it's a beautiful sign because our town is becoming like an encyclopedia of the most contemporary architecture. Uh, how did these star architects translate our identity into these buildings? So I think that speeds up the learning curve and it's, it's beautiful to have different type of architects, different approaches. It's a good sign for a city to have an influx of creative architects building and designing that city. It's, it's a very good sign. Amongst Qatar's impressive skyscrapers and modern infrastructure, its living history is sometimes hidden in plain sight. But look closer and you'll see buildings like these ones. Qatar's heritage houses are scattered all over the country, preserved as a reminder of its humble beginnings. Laila Humaira took a trip down memory lane to uncover the secrets and significance of these historical structures. This is Education City, a sprawling site in an area called Al Rayyan. It's a center of knowledge and wisdom. Around 70 years back, all but only a few structures stood in this place, the houses of Qatar's modern forefathers. Noor Allah and her team at Qatar Foundation have been tasked to keep these heritage houses alive for years to come. These structures were simple, made of clay and stone, but for the generations of families they housed, these walls became a place where memories were made, wisdom shared, and the centre of community gatherings that built the very foundations of Qatar's tight-knit society. The builders of that era had two things in mind while constructing these houses privacy and protection from the hot desert climate. The main feature of a traditional Qatari house is that it's built around a courtyard. And it will start with a room or two rooms and it will expand according to the family's needs. There is only one room that faces outside or has windows to the outside and that's the majlis. The majlis is the reception room where the men of the house greet their guests. 
So the majlis has no interaction with the inner part of the house, which is more private for the family members and the females of the family members. Other features, like the wood sticking out from the roof, were created unintentionally. The wood was very precious, so that's why you see like the different lengths in the, it's called danshal, different lengths of the danshal woods because nobody would cut the piece of wood. So you will see like the width of the rooms does not, does never exceed uh, three meters. These danshal beams provided a roof over the heads of the families, shielded them from the sun, and improved airflow to keep the house cool. And to build the rest of the house, they only had to look around them. They would uh, use the materials that were available in the land. So mostly we will see most of the houses are built uh, initially with stones, the stones that are uh, available in the Qatari land. While Qatar's futuristic skyline continues to evolve, its historical houses like these that the country is also proud to preserve for future generations. There's something called cultural continuity. These things that create the identity of the person and then creates the wider identity of the nation. So if by preserving those aspects of the culture, of the tradition, especially built heritage, the materiality that represents the memories, so that memories could be passed to next generations and the identity could continue to be rooted and the people could continue to feel a sense of belonging to, to where they are. From contemporary mosques to heritage houses, we hope you enjoyed this episode exploring some of Qatar's architectural wonders. But that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.